welcome you to this place and we hope and pray that you have been blessed thus far amen, amen. let us pray <clears throat> loving father in heaven we still believe that this message has lost none of its power we believe that your word will accomplish that which you have ordained it to do it will not return unto you void and father this afternoon as we now sit in this congregation oh god we ask a special anointing upon this morning's message anoint our ears and quicken our feet and our hearts in the way of righteousness we ask that your holy spirit's presence will fall afresh upon us in copious measures may he come and have his way in our hearts for time and for eternity this we ask in the precious precious name of jesus amen we are continuing our our series which is entitled soul train it is a series of sermons uh, on the topic of spiritualism and we're actually on part number four this morning we're going to take a look at the eastern man now, before i begin i want to put out a disclaimer this is not an assault at people from the east I believe God has people groups in all places of this world who love him, amen? amen? And he is now gathering a people from every tribe and nation to his own. And we are not given the right to judge people, but we can judge ideas. We must understand and we must be intelligent enough to understand if I denounce an idea, it does not mean I'm denouncing a man. Amen. Amen. The Eastern Man. Now, there are some books uh, I want to encourage you guys to get. They are uh, written by the same author. I'm trying to get him to come here. He's a very busy, busy guy, so we're trying to work something out for the new year. Um, it is called Spiritualistic Deception in Health and Healing. A wonderful book, well researched. It is worth every penny. They're pretty expensive. And then he has a, a new one, which is uh, similar. It's actually, a, this is a black and white cover, but it's colored. And it is the spiritualistic exposing the spiritual deception in, in practice and healing. It's by a medical doctor, and he's one of us. So I encourage you guys to get it. You can look it up on, um, on the internet. And if you, I know a company who has them, so if you want to see me later on, I can definitely... You know, give you the information you, you want to get it in your lab. A wonderful book, I said, and most of the information that will be quoted from this morning will be taken from those two books. Amen? So, uh, I hope you guys will get it. Now, let's take our Bibles to our opening text. Luke, Luke 24. Luke chapter 24, and we are quoting from the authorized version which is the King James King James version are we there Luke 24 verse number 5 are we there and the texts are also on the screen to help us expedite time the Bible says verse 5 says this read to get after 3 1 2 Three, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? What a profound question. And this question speaks to us today in several ways. You wouldn't ask a blind man to critique your artwork, would you? Or ask him to critique your term paper. 
Would you ask a deaf man to critique your singing? <laughs> or better yet, ask a man who has never left his hometown to give you advice to a best vacation spot. You wouldn't ask a child molester to watch your child, would you? So why do we seek light from those who are in darkness? And why do we seek life from those who are dead? My thesis comes from a vision that Mrs. White had. It is chronicled in the book, Early Writings, page number 88, and I read, I saw the rapidity with, with this delusion underscore was spreading. I what? That's the title of this series, Soul Train. A train of cars were shown going me at the speed of lightning. The angel bade me look carefully. I fixed my eyes upon the train. It seemed the whole what? Word was on board. You ought to underscore that. She said, then he showed me the conduct, conductor who appeared to be like a stately and fair person whom all the passengers looked up and reverenced. I was perplexed and asked my thin angel, who is it? He replied, it is Satan. He is the conductor in the form of an angel of light. He has taken the world captive and they are given to strong delusions to believe a lie that they all might be damned. They all, they're all going with lightning speed to perdition. That is hell. I asked the angel, is there none left? He bade me look in the opposite direction. And I saw a little company who were traveling the narrow pathway. All seemed firmly united, bound together by truth in bundles or companies, said the third angel. The an said the angel, the third angel is now binding or sealing them for the heavenly God. We have deduced that this train is a metaphor for spiritualism. Because there is one thing, every religion, whether they are pagan and Christianity or indigenous people have in common, it is a belief that the soul is immortal. Yes. That train is a metaphor for spiritualism. We must ask ourselves the question, are we on this train this morning? And the very fact that you are a Seventh-day Adventist Christian doesn't mean that Jesus knows you. Because half the people in this church are going to hell. Uh -huh. Haven't you read where she says as the storm approaches a large class who profess faith in the third angel but have not been sanctified by obedience, they now abandon their position. And join the beasts, the dragon and the false prophet. And if you are on the train, you've got to get off. And we've said this train is not stopping. You've got to get off. Your soul, your mortal soul depends upon it. We've showed you that spiritualism had, have invaded us on the three fronts. It has made its way through the scientific circle. It has also invaded the churches and even in the legislative bodies, Congress. And we'll look at those in upcoming lecture. But it has come into the scientific circle. And we've looked at last week that Satan's last this, um, aid to deceive the world, he will come as a physician who can heal all their maladies. You know, there are two systems of healing today in the world. One is from above. And the other is from beneath. And you've got to know how to differentiate. Because we're told the track of truth and error sometimes lies close together. Yes. And they may seem one to the mind who is not worked by the Holy Ghost. And that is why we need eyes solve. Yes. We need to see yes. this morning. God's system of healing is very simple, not complex. As a matter of fact, in the Garden of Eden, God gave us uh, eight laws of health. And we know them. Genesis 2.17, he gave us godly trust. You've got to learn how to trust God, beloved. 
We are told the arm of flesh will fail you. You've got to learn how to lean, the song says. Lean on Jesus. Amen. Then he gave us open air. It is good to have, we are told, a, 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 flesh, a fresh flow of air flowing through your house. Cons. Crack the windows. It drives out impurities. You find that principle in Genesis 1, 6 through 7. Then daily exercise. And this is where many of us, our religion comes to a screeching halt. And we have just narrowed down health. To meat or flesh. It is broad beloved. Amen. You've got to get out there and walk. And get your bicycle. Do something. Get the blood flowing. Exercise. And we need to get our sunlight. Then we need to get proper rest. Amen. Early bird catches the first worm. Amen. Try to go to bed before 10 o'clock they say. I'm trying to get there by the grace of God. <laughs> We've got to drink lots of water. Purifies the system. And you've got to be temperate in everything. You know, when I was a young man in Jamaica, they had a little candy called Red Red. Pure sugar. With coconut. And I was an addict. And I used to save my lunch money and buy a whole pocket full of Red Red. And when I got home, my grandmother... Bless her heart. She would say, are you going to eat all those red, red? You've got to be temperate. Now she equate, equate temperance of eating not too much or not too much of a bad thing. That's not temperance. That's pseudo temperance. True temperance beckons us to abstain entirely from that which is injurious or harmful and use judiciously that which is good. The Bible says eat honey. But too much honey, you become diabetic. We've got to be temperate in good things and abstain from the bad things. And then there is nutrition. Fruits, nuts, and grains in abundance. And if men will just live by these eight laws, happiness will rain down the city in copious measures. And today, men are seeking out different ways of healing. But we are told that there are many ways of practicing the art of healing. But there's only one way. That's the right way. That's the narrow way. That's the heavenly way. That heavens approve. God's remedies are simple agencies. What are they? Pure air, water, cleanness. And you've got to be clean. Nothing is more repulsive than a dirty Christian. Amen. Clean your car, man. Or pay somebody to get it done. <laughs> Vacuum it. Clean your house. Amen. Get your teeth clean. <laughs> You've got to be clean and palatable and presentable because we are Christians. Amen. Purity of life and a firm trust in God are remedies for want which thousands are dying. These eight doctors, and they don't take Obamacare. And they're not really concerned about uh, 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 your Medicaid. They are free. Amen. Uh, and they are accessible to all of us. In John chapter 5, now I'm heading somewhere, you just bear with me. In John chapter 5, verse 14, there was a man who was sick. And Jesus is about to perform this wonderful cure. And verse 14 says, And afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Then Jesus said to him, Sin no more, lest a what thing? A worse thing come upon you. Now let me say this. For just from deductive reasoning. And I'm looking into this text with a magnifying glass. This man was sick. And it seemed now Jesus now traced his, his sickness to sin. He had transgressed some law. Health law. And he had now brought upon him a severe malady. And Jesus says, I'm going to cure you. But the thing that you have been doing, you've got to stop. You've got to quit. You've got to get victory. Why less a worse thing. Thus Jesus from this, he now traced sickness from a violation of God's law, which is sin. And I didn't quote Ellen White to get that one. So you can't say he just quoted 
Ellen White. Hosea had sent for they have sown the wind. And they have reaped the whirlwind. You are not run past that. And let me tell you something. She says the Lord has made it plain. That man's reaping shall be according to his sowing. And what you sow, you going to reap. You sow wickedness. Don't expect to reap righteousness. And if you don't catch it, let me tell you something. Your children. They say what goes around still comes. Still comes around. You must understand, yes, we'll reap what you sow. Now, reaping is usually greater than the sowing. Hey, listen, man, you violate God's laws. God knows what you will reap. A multiplicity of diseases. And then reaping is not immediate. Solomon says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Because we don't get sick every time we willfully transgress, then we think that God has forgotten. But let me tell you something. He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. There is no variance with God. He is a patient God. And when he decides to pay off, rest assured, he pays in full. Ahab and Jezebel was an odd couple. And through their rulership, they had plunged Israel into idolatry. They worshipped the hosts of heaven. And you reap what you sow. And then the man of God had prophesied that the house of Ahab has got to go. And everything that pisseth against the wall. Hey, and that's in the Bible. That's not kosher language, but it's man, Holy Ghost language. He prophesied that Jezebel, her paint and her mascara has got to go. Jezebel, Ahab's house will be smitten, Elijah had prophesied. The house of Ahab shall be cut down and made a dunghill. And verse 10, he prophesied that the dogs shall eat her cadaver. And what he prophesied came to fruition. She met her demise at the hand of Jehu, the son of Nephesh. Now Ahab's house was not cut down immediately. Now he had a son. And you find this in 1 Kings 22, 51 through 53. The Bible says Ahaziah. Son of who? Ahab. His mother was Jezebel. Reign over Israel in Samaria. And 52 says, and he did that was evil in God's sight. And he walked in the ways of his father and his mother and made Israel to sin. Verse 53 says, and he served Baal. And this takes us back to the Tower of Babel. And worshipped him and provoked the Lord to anger and done the works which his father had done. The apple didn't fall far from the tree. Now the Bible says in 2 Kings 1 verse 2 that this king one day he fell through his, 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 his lattice but it's really his, his chamber. And he hurt himself. Probably he had broken some bone or had some internal bleeding. The Bible doesn't specify. But this I do know that his fall made him sick. And the Bible says, and he sent messengers and said unto them, go inquire of who? Beelzebub. Beelzebub. That's Nimrod. That's the host of heaven. The God of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. In Prophets and King, the chapter is called The Fall of the House of Ahab. Page 210. Mrs. White now shines that magnifying glass over this text and she blows it up. She says this, the God of Ekron was supposed to give information through the medium of its priests concerning future events. Large numbers of people were, went to inquire of it, 
but the predictions they uttered and the information given proceeded from the prince of who? Darkness. Darkness. Ahaziah's servants were met by a man, underscore a man, who directed them to return to the king with this message. Is it because there is no God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, now therefore thus saith Jehovah? Thou shalt not come down from the bed which thou art gone up, but thou shalt surely, underscore, surely die. Having delivered his message, the prophet departed. I like that. He left like the mist. She says, the astonished servants hastened back to the king and repeated to him the words of the man of God. The king inquired what manner of man he was. He didn't ask him where did he go to school. Or, 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 just asked him what manner of man he was. And in that question was bound up. They answered, he was a hairy man. <laughs> and girt with uh, girt of leather about his loins. Now, the man's attire gave him away. I wonder if sometimes our attire let the world know that we're Christians. And there was a time in the history of this church you could tell an Adventist miles away yeah. how they dress. Yeah. None but Adventists dress like that. But now we have come to a point, we have gone incognito in churches. Yeah. You can't tell who the visitors are from who the yes, members are. You know, I read, a, I read a story about a gas truck. It has a point. Hilarious. Loaded down with petroleum. On the way to deliver gas. But it ran out of gas. <laughs> now here's a gas truck loaded down with petroleum. You see, the gas that it had was not for himself. It was for others. And we have come to a point now, it seems the truth that we have, it doesn't really apply to us. It applies to them folks in Babylon. You preach it straight to them and direct don't beat around the bush. But when you come to us, you speak in parabolical language. It is Elijah the Tishbite. As they exclaimed, he knew that if the stranger whom his messengers had met was indeed Elijah, the words of doom. I say the words of doom must surely come to pass. And it did come to pass. Now this story speaks to us today in 2014. She says now, she transitions. The history of King Ahaziah's sin and its punishment has its warning which none can disagree with impunity. Disregard with impunity. Men today may not pray, pay homage to heathen gods, yet thousands are worshipping at Satan's shrine as verily as did the king of Israel. The spirit of idolatry uh, and strife in the world today, although under the influence of science and education, it has assumed forms more refined and attractive than in the days when man sought out the God of Ekron. She goes on to say, today, the mysteries of heathen worship are replaced by secret association and sciences. Sciences, the obscurities and wonders of spirit medium. The disclosure of these mediums are eagerly received by thousands who refuse to accept light from God's word to his spirit. Believers in spiritism may speak with, speak with scorn of the magicians of old, but the greater deceiver laughs in triumph as they yield to his arts under a different. Amen. And that's the concept of the frog. It has changed its form. Then she says, there are many who shrink with horror at the thought of consulting spirit mediums. Yet they are attracted by the more pleasing, the more reformed forms of spiritualism. Others are led astray by Christian what? Science. Christian science. And that's Christian Scientology. And the spokesman is Tom Cruise. Yes. And the founder of this so-called religion is Mary Baker Eddy. And I want you to know the time frame. She died just 10, five, ten, five years before Ellen White. And they reigned the same time. I wonder why. Do you think it's uh, by happenstance? No. 
She's the founder of the Montessori school. And if you have your kids in that school, pull them out. Yes. That thing is steeped in spiritualism. Earth worship. And the her most monumentous work is a book entitled Science and Health, the Key to Scriptures. In that, she says, God is nature. Wrong. God is not nature. Nature testifies of God. God is mind and God is father and mother and Jesus was not the Christ. And I'm not here whistling Dixie. It's in the book. Jesus did not reflect the fullness of God. And why did he do that? And why are we here? Jesus did not die. The Holy Spirit is a, design, is a divine science. There is no devil. And the reason why I should believe that is because she and the devil, they were going the same way. Amen. There is no sin. Evil and good are not real. And matter, sin and sickness are not real but only an illusion. I don't think I'll be following Miss Mary Baker Eddy anytime soon go back to my reading she says Christian science and the mysticism of theosophy now this now brings us to a woman and she just looks spooky her name was Helen Blavatsky she's the founder of the this theosophist movement and it is really a religion that incorporates aspects of Buddhism Brahmism and they also believe in reincarnation. This is a book written by Nicholas Goodrick and he, Clark, and he says that she was born of an aristocrat parents. Blavatsky, a flamboyant, charismatic personality, was from an early age aware of her what? That order, that, let, me, let me just stop right there. Need not go any further. Psychic. She spent much of her time traveling through Europe. In the Middle East, Asia, and America, through her travels and under various teachers, she was able to, to hone or develop her psychic powers. And then she influenced the famous Alice E. Bailey. Now you think that uh, Blavatsky was bad, and Mary Baker Eddy was bad. She was badder, and that's not even a word anyway. <laughs> Alice E. Bailey. You look her up. Alice A. Bailey. And the New Age and the, 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 the New World Order, they use her writings religiously. Let me get back to my reading. But the thing that really struck me, Christian science and biomysticism, theosophy, and other oriental, and that's my title, the Eastern man when we speak of oriental religion what are we speaking about eastern religious such as india china japan southeast asia and so forth so she in that sentence she ties eastern religion it has a vein to spiritualism now we realize that there was a Tower of Babel for those in Lecture 1 and the tower was built by Nimrod and the purpose was they did not want to be scattered. You can read the chapter in Pages on Prophet, the, the Tower of Babel. Wonderful chapter. Now God came and he destroyed whether he confound the language. Now we showed you at the top of this tower there was a religion called the Mystery Religion and the chief study was astrology. Are you with me? Numerology. The, the, the third room is the zodiac. Are you with me? Now, God came and, and he confounded the language. So the people were unable to continue the tower because there was a language barrier. But as they were scattered now, they took this religion with them to different parts of the earth. Are you with me? Here we have Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. Nimrod was called the Lord of Heaven, Tammuz the pagan Messiah, and Semiramis was the Queen of Heaven. Now, among the Israelites, Nimrod was called Baal, Tammuz was called Tammuz, and Semiramis was called Astaroth or Astarte. But different religions called them by different names. But it was the same Babylonian, paganistic, 
astrologistic worship. Now there are two I want us to focus on. In even this religion had went as far as India. Nibar was called Vish, Vishnu. Tammuz was called Krishna. And Simiramis was called Isis or Divakia. China called Nimrod Panku. Tammuz Yi. And I don't know how to pronounce this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not even going to try and bite my tongue this morning. But the religion spread. And isn't it ironic that every culture has their mother and child? Every nation has a replica. Uh, and, and the thing that binds them together, now it is true, they may not all practice length in its outward form. Why 40 days of length? We learn Tammuz died at 40. So in Ezekiel chapter 9, 8, when Ezekiel said they were weeping for Tammuz, Ezekiel doesn't give us the actual length, but we know it was 40 days of weeping. Tied to it was also ash and Easter and astrology and sun worship. So this religion that was called the Mystery Religion, it had everything in it. So every nation, even they were scattered, they incorporated these principles. Are you with me? Now, so here we see now, Simiramis in India would be Divakia and Krishna. Vishu would be the equivalent for Nimrod. So you see the, 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 the replicas. It's the same thing. Now when you get down to China, this was Panku, and this was uh, the, 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 the anti-type of Nimrod, of Simiramis, and there's a child, Tammuz. And this is Panku, and he was supposed to be Nimrod, a giant, and he rules in the air. Now, beloved, we have come to a point now that the East is now seeking to evangelize the West. And paganism is now moving from East to West. Now, I'm quoting from the book, this book that I told you about earlier. And the author says this. Outside of God's original plan of health and healing, the oldest continuous system of medicine is called what? Ayurveda. I broke up in syllables this morning. Right? It has its beginning from the Indus River in the northern India sometime before what? Now we learned that the Tower of Babel, right, was built in the year 2342 BC. BC counts down. So by the time this, this religion here now came on, this healing came on the scene, we were 642 years removed from where? From the Tower of Babel. But bear in mind, it still incorporated the worship of astrology, Nimrod, Simiramis, even though the language were changed. He goes on to say now, it was established by the same ancient sages, holy men who proceeded, who pr produced India's original system of meditation, no. yoga. yoga. Wow. And, Astrology. right? So you can tie Ayurveda to yoga and astrology. Now, Time Magazine uh, had, a, had a cover, and this is a pretty outdated one, uh, and on the, uh, we were amazed to see yoga on the front of a Western magazine. Yoga is an Eastern practice. Now, they ask the question, not what's so bad about yoga? Isn't it just stretching? It helps me to release my stress, to get flexible. Now, yoga is practice all across this world. Now, in America, the kind of yoga that is, that is practiced is called Hatha Yoga, where it, it only focuses on the stretches. That is what's practiced here in America. Now, what is yoga? Yoga comes from, come from the word sans, sans, Sanskrit, and it, it's generally translated means a union, or to what? Yo. So when you practice yoga, you are yoking. You are unionizing yourself with something. The absolute God of Hinduism. 
So that's the whole purpose of yoga. Whether it's Western or Eastern, you are yoking yourself with the chief god of Hinduism, which is Brahma. Now, Brahma is Vishnu. It's the same God which leads you right back to the towel of Babel, brothers and sisters. Let's connect the dots this morning. Now, lest you think that yoga is just some little plaything, this is actually a journal, uh, yoga, yoga journal, where folks subscribe to it by email. And the journal released, Yoga in America, says this. The latest yoga in America studies just released by Yoga Journal shows that 20.4 million. Now, let me tell you something. If you're practicing yoga by default, you're on the train. Now, when she said the whole world was on the train, now you can see, brothers and sisters, you've got to get off the train because yoga is going to lead you to hell. You are yoking yourself up with Satan. And no one who, who's knowingly practicing yoga will enter heaven. You can quote me on that one. Let it sink in your cerebral this morning. It's about heaven or hell, brothers and sisters. It's not my opinion. Look what happened now. Compared to 15.8 million, it has jumped 29%. And not to mention the monetary basis. Practitioners spend $10.3 billion a year in yoga classics, classes and yoga is the man, yoga products, yoga cup, yoga scarf. And you can't use yoga without the yoga pants. You know, when I was in college, the FIU, you know, I played soccer for them and, you know, off season, you know, we had to work out. And I had, I had to you know, do summer classes and I needed an extra class to boost my, my GPA. Get it on a 2.5-ish, you know. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I wanted, you know what I'm saying? You know how it is, athletes. We're not really into that kind of stuff, you know. But anyway, so a friend of mine, his name was Nuki. He played, he says, he says, Nati, listen, man. Won't you come take this class to me? It's called yoga. Now, I never heard about yoga. The only thing yoga I know was Yogi Bear. That's the first I would <laughs> about no yoga. Literally. So... He said to me, they got some pretty girls in that class. And that's why I went, brother. You know that, <laughs> that those days I was in the world. So we signed up for the class. It was a, I think it was a two credit, two credit class. You know what I'm saying? We paid you know, about six something, you know what I'm saying, for the class. Went there and I had to get the yoga pants. I'm walking around these little spandex. When I got in the class, it was pure men in that class, that, that, that quarter. It seemed that all the men had heard all the girls were going to take the class. <laughs> and they signed up. Now, there were two sessions, A and B. The girls would come in the B session. So it was about 35 men in the class in yoga spandex. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. And the professor, he wasn't manly. He was fairish. So the, the class started. I said, okay, you know, I can, I can, I can, I can handle this. You know, you know, homophobic about me. I can, I can work with this thing, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not lying to you. No, brother, you know, I grew up an Adventist. So there are certain things I was entrenched in me. Now, even when I was in the world, you could not convince me that Sunday was the Sabbath. Go talk to the tree. And even when I was in the world, I would never attend another church. I would just hang out in the world. Because I knew my roots. And I decided if I'm going, going back to any church, it's going to be the Adventist church. So I'm in the, I'm in the yoga class. I'm not lying to you. And, and you know, the guy is giving us the, 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 the history of it. And it seemed kosher. And then he said, now we're going to do the, the deep breathing. And we started deep breathing. He, you know, we're going to do a posture to the sun now. Now when I heard that, let me tell you something. I dropped that class. I took Taekwondo, which is just as bad anyway. <laughs> I literally got out of the class. When I heard sun poses, right, the spirit rang a bell. I left them in there. Does yoga have a hidden agenda? Yes. 
it is the, the, the plan of, 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 of yoga. And even the Hindus who brought yoga over here, their, their plan was to Christianize or de-Christianize Christianity with yoga. And that is why Ellen White says spiritualism is now changing its form. Yes. It is now what? Veiling some of its what? More objectionable features. But she said it is more dangerous. So what they have done with yoga now, they have changed certain words. For instance, the Panayama, right, is called deep breathing. This means that you now get on the same breathing pattern with the cosmos. But they just call it deep breathing. So you hear deep breathing, well, it must be deep breathing. So they have used kind of, they have kind of, you know, changed the words a little bit. So you in the West, you who are a Christian, you don't know what you're getting used to, you're breathing. And then the, they don't talk about the seven chakras. They call it seven energy centers. I'm going to show you what the, the chakra it is, it is supposed to now release what is called kundalini. But they don't use kundalini because it sounds sound scary. They just say the seven energy centers. It sounds nice. Now, what is kundalini? Now, Mr. Kachal, you got, my, you got my, my, my sound in the back? I'm going to show you a clip on what kundalini really is. brand of yoga called dynamic meditation is a new age combination of Hinduism and psychotherapies. This exercise involving rigorous breathing and hyperventilation is designed to arouse the serpent force called Kundalini, which the gurus believe lies coiled at the base of the spine. I did dynamic meditation every day. We also called it kundalini meditation. It starts off with a cathartic breathing, and the reason for it is just to move your energy and to get you out of your head and into your body, and you just breathe. And that's when the Kundalini is now released. Now, if you saw this, you say, I'm not, I'm not going in that building. <laughs> but, but they don't do that in the West. They veil the objection of a part of it. So then the question, let me turn these lights back on because I need to let there be light. <laughs> this is the question now. This is the question I get from most young people is this. Right? Right? Many now have tried to separate yoga from Hinduism. So we say, I'm, I'm not practicing Hinduism. I'm a, I'm a born again Christian. I don't support Hinduism, but I only do yoga. Or a person, this way now, can a person reject the spiritual aspect of yoga but still practice the exercise? You know, when I think of this, there was a story in the Bible about Saul. Samuel had told small Saul to go and smite the Amalekites and destroy everything they have in 1 Samuel 15, 2 and 3. But what Saul did now, Saul, what Saul speared Agag. In other words, Saul says, I'm not going to practice Hinduism. I will just do the stretches. <laughs> it's like this crazy music, the gospel rap. And folks, so, you know, I don't listen to the beats. I, I, I reject the beats. 
but I just focus on the words. Light and darkness cannot harmonize, brothers and sisters. But Bible, are you reading? Doesn't Jesus says can two walk together and set they be agreed? And, 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 and when Samuel came, he says to Saul, what is that I hear? The breathing of the sheep, he says, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. He says, for rebellion is as witchcraft and stubbornness as idolatry. So can a person reject the spiritual aspects of yoga and still do the exercise? No. Here it is. God of the New Age. Jeremiah Finn says this. There can be no Hinduism without yoga. And there can be no yoga without Hinduism. And what most folks who practice yoga don't realize, even the Hatha that they do over here, Hatha has two words, Hath, Sun, Tha, Moon. Therefore, each stretch you do is a salutation to the sun and the moon and the stars. Simiramis, Nimrod, and Tammuz. All these are poses that you're venerating the sun. There it is, brothers and sisters. It's not the sun. There they are. So look at this. All this is sun worship. Now you'll notice there are 12 salutations. That ought to ring a bell. Because it brings us back to the 12 signs of the zodiac. This thing is steep in astrology. And for this is an incriminating piece of evidence. And for a Seventh-day Adventist, yeah, a Christian, to practice yoga in the light of this, God is not going to wink anymore. And if you're in yoga, you need to cancel that class ASAP. You said, no, what? Well, I, I, need, I, need a, I need to work out. Man, go walk in the park. Go a garden. <laughs> Do something else to lose weight. But get out of yoga because you're yoking yourself to the devil. I wish I had time to talk about yoga, but let me move on. Then we have Panku. Now, Panku now is China. Watch it now. In the Chinese concept of healing, all matter is made of yin and yang. Yeah, there was a, a rapper that came out called the yin yang twin. Including every part of the human body. Illnesses are either what? No, not what the Bible says. Jesus says, go and sin no more. It ain't about no yin and yang. It's about you violating one of God's laws. She flows into the body at birth and leaves at death. During a person's lifetime, it flows in a specific and continuous pattern in the form of yin and yang. And this is where it comes from. It is the, this is their logo. It is a balance of good and evil. There's no balance between good and evil. You cut the lights off in this church, darkness comes. You cut the lights on, darkness leaves. There ain't no balance in that. And so therefore, they say now, illnesses is a result of an ill balance. So we either have to lower the yin or raise the yang, but we've got to get them on an equal par. And that is why the same principle with martial arts the same concept of yin and yang. Why do you think that we're black and white? Because it's the cheapest way to go. <laughs> Why do you think the dots of the dominoes are black and white? And, and dominoes is an eastern game. That's the principle of there. And you've got church folks who will play this all night. And they will justify it in the name of Jesus. But rest assured, you reap what you sow. You are sowing the wind, and trust me, if you don't break loose, you shall reap the whirlwind chess. The same principle. The same principle why every time a president uh, visits the Pope, he is in white and the woman is in black. Why don't she wear pink? Or some bright and, 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 and robust. And that's just, this is Hillary Clinton. This is 
Laura Bush, your ex-president. I didn't vote for her. I didn't vote for none of them. <laughs> Same principle. Black and white. Reagan. Black and white. Hey. Hey. And you know, he, he, he retired and she's gonna see the new one. Why is she in black? Is she going to a funeral? And she's all about fashion. Why don't she wear something pretty? He goes back to the yin and the yang. In this development, many martial arts were influenced by Eastern philosophy, Buddhism, Taoism, Buddhism emphasis on self-attainment, self-mastery, self-realization, self-enlightenment. I'll tell you so. Because self must die, brothers and sisters. Not I, but Christ. And it goes back to the defense of balance. Then we have the alternative acupuncture. And we looked at it. What is it? Uh, it is a study, astrology. Uh, let me back up. Astrology, acupuncture, two words. Acu means uh, needles and puncture. We know what it is. Acupuncture is an ancient system of healing consisting of insertion of needles into one or more of the what? 12, 12 meridians. The body. The body. 12 months of the year. Connected to the 12 meridians are 365 what? In the needles, the year, listen, here they are, right? Talks about the seed of the moon. This is a uh, traditional acupuncture, but it's still the same thing, right? And any, any logical thinking person will deduce that acupuncture has its roots in astrology. 365 points, days of the year. 12 meridians. 12 months and the position of the moon acupuncture has its root in astrology then we have this concept called universal energy what is it universal energy teaches that the body has specific channels in which are not not only carry nutrients to the body but additionally uh, conduct subtle energies which link man with the cosmos whoa that's the universe. Diseases in our Vadia medicine is said to be determined by knowing which of the channels is affected. Massage and yoga exercise are used to open these channels because they're blocked. Then they're flowing freely. The, the congestion of these channels is considered the source of the what? So with that massage now, then comes essential oils. And it's hold on, not hold on, hold on, not you're getting some kind of fanatical. No, I'm not fanatical, brothers and sisters. Now, nothing is wrong with oils in themselves. So don't go away and throw your peppermint oil. Give it to me. That thing's expensive. <laughs> One in the bottle is about <laughs> 20 hours, my sisters. Yeah, eucalyptus oil. Give it to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that thing's expensive. So the issue is not the oils. Because the Bible says he causes the grass to grow in the herb and it's herb ain't ganja. The herb for the service of men. So through herbs, man, men are not can extract oil. So oils by themselves are not evil. But when it is yoked to that concept, yes. that is when it becomes bad. Yes. Here it is now. In Avida, it is thought that there are some hundred and hundred and seven points in the body called trigger points. Right? And by massaging these points, we are able to facilitate the flow of energy that may be stagnant, blocked, or in some way congested. By massage, in particular, marana, marana points located on the body, said where the congestion to flow the universal energy with essential oils, the energy now begins to flow. During different types of essential oils are used for different types of illnesses, and in turn, these oils will be chosen for application to the particular trigger point. That is when it becomes dangerous. Yes. Not the oils by themselves. See, the devil has to make some light with, with, with good. With good. Right? Then we have what is called reflexology. What is that? Reflexology. 
is a gentle contemporary therapy which the practitioner applies controlled pressure within the thumbs or the fingers to specific areas of the feet or sometimes the hand. It is based on a theory that every organ structure and part of the body is mirrored in the feet and that any problem or tension in the body is reflected in the part of the foot. So in other words now, for instance, your, 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 your big toe, <laughs> this toe right here is due to your eye. So if you have an eye problem, I go to the foot. Because this toe has a nerve. You know, even the apostles never practiced these foolishness. You just look in the gospel. Did Jesus massage anybody's foot for no healing? Right? Look at this now. The nerve endings primary in the feet are stimulated by specific massage technique to enact change in other part of the body. Thereby to create a healthy system and help overcome what? It goes as far back as ancient Egypt. And there it is. Massages. Now you say not, is anything wrong with me getting a massage? No. Massages are not bad. As a matter of fact, when I leave here Saturday night, I get one. My wife rubbed my feet. <laughs> no, hoping it's your wife rubbing your feet. You know what I'm <laughs> so massages by themselves are not. Don't leave here saying, not saying I shouldn't get no massage. I didn't say that, church. You got it on camera. As a matter of fact, even in our sanitarium, Dr. Kellogg, through the Council of Ellen White, used a massage called Swedish massage. Now today, Swedish has gone swindled. <laughs> they have left. They, they, they incorporate all kind of foolishness. But even if you go to Wildwood and, and, and Yuji Pine and some of these places, they do teach Swedish massage. And the principle is male do not massage female. I'm going to tell you a true story. A buddy of mine, he got his teaching in one of these schools out there in the world. So he was massaging everybody. And he told me one day he was at a woman's house massaging her and her eyes begin to dilate in her head. You read between that. And hydrotherapy. So massages are not bad in themselves. But when you're going to talk about now massage your foot to fix your liver, that's where the problem is. That's where the problem is. So you must avoid these these. Reflexology ties back to the zodiac. Are you with me? There is part of the body. Pisces. And why the foot and the hand? Why did they choose those two, 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 two parts of the body? It is said early in the development of the astrological system in the east, the 12 houses of the zodiac were assigned, assigned to various parts of the body, starting with the head, Eris, the arm, the ram ending to the feet, Pisces, the fish. So it's linked man back to the universe. Here it is now. The organs of the body were then assigned, skip on down, the Chinese divided the body into a vertical manner, believing that a specific universe, cosmos, energy, just sound confusing, man. Called Chi, ran through the body, flowing to the 12 vertical divisions called meridians. Reflexology, the book says, is a variant of acupressure, acupuncture. The cosmos. This is the punchline now. Teaches that there are crystal cosmos of calcium and other substance on the nerve ending in the hands or the foot that are supposed to connect with the organ of the body. The massage is said to break up the crystal which will relieve nerve or energy blockage which then brings healing and then they apply these energy stones on your foot. Reflexology is tied to astrology, beloved. Amazing, this is serious. All of these then we have areology. Lord have mercy. You know, when I was young, and this is so true, it's really a Chinese practice. There was a man down crossroads, a Chinese man. And they say he could look in your eye and tell you where you were sick. I didn't know what it was. 
is called a radiology. It basically says that you look in the person's eye and you can diagnose the seat of his illnesses. That is not even biblical. And the guy who invented it, I forgot his name, uh, the, the story says he, um, he found a bird and a bird, this German doctor, the bird had broken its neck, something like that. And he looked in the eye, and then the eye had a line in it. And that line was, that's not the, 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 um, the, the bird had broken his neck. So he connected now the neck being broke to something in the eye. Our radiology. Illness is result from an ill balance. But that's, that's the whole concept of our, our, our radiology. Now here it is now. I'm quoting from the, the book. Is an alternative method of making a medical diagnosis for the patient. Present, sorry, I'm predicting disorder in the future. Interesting. Our radiology. It is a divination method which involves examining the iris of the eye and expecting the color, texture, and location of the various pigment fleck in the iris. The practitioners say they can detect imbalance. Where do you see the word imbalance? It goes back to yin and the yang, brothers and sisters. Because you got to get the yin now level with the yang. In the body system, which then it can be treated with vitamins. And because they add vitamins and herbs, it just sounds kosher. Everything now is organic. One man told me, I sell organic pork. <laughs> that means he doesn't, he feed his pigs natural stuff. That's organic. And that's how we're deceived. Because they put non-GMO on it, now we just automatically think. The book says, hope you can see it. Now, our radiology is tied to astrology. It says, all right, you can't read it. His name is Brent. He's an ideologist. He says this, from an Eastern point of view, the eye may be viewed as the man mandala. The mandala links the microcosm. There it is now, microcosm, that's, that's the cosmos. And the micro. Cosms, macrocosms, thank you, through the man, 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 mandala, man, mandala, man may be project into the universe, through the universe into man. In radiology, a micro, macrocosms, the microcosm is the link into the eye. A radiology may be summed up as an observation of the changes that arise from the interplay of various levels of consciousness and results in one's unique evolution into greater occult truth and light. And this is from an areologist, an astrologer. Beloved, we are here. And that is how Satan has come to us. He comes as the healing man. See, many of us Adventists, oh, we won't go to Mama Lou to get your palms read. But you'll work with that acupuncturist. Because you want to get your pain relief. And as I close, this one is, now this one is, this is dangerous. It is called the law of attraction. Now, there's a principle Mrs. White used in her books to sustain this. She says this. As I, we're going to wind down in this. Spiritualism teaches that man is the creature of what? Progression. That it is his destiny from birth to progress even to eternity towards the Godhead. Again, each man will judge itself and another. The throne is within you. And that is a trigger for the law of attraction. The throne. You know, I never forget, you know, when I, when I, I, at FIU, I went as a walk-on. It was a Division I. I made, it, made the squad, but I wasn't getting any playing time. So it was, it was either me or the coach. I know it wasn't me. So I, I decided, I'm, I went to see a, psych, a, a, a psychologist. And I never, his office was, the leather just smelled rich. He, had a, he said, not just lay, that back, lay back in the chair and just speak to me. What's your problem? I said, well, you know, I made the team, but man, it's almost seven games now, and I'm not getting any playing time. I'm deep on the bench. 
He says, what's going to happen now? The next time the coach puts you on, you've got to tap into yourself. Now I'm sitting saying, man, that, that, that's true. I need to tap into myself, brothers and sisters. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to show you the clip. Never forget it. It was Penn State that Saturday. The Nifty Lions. Them what was a tall like a palm tree. And the coach gave me 15 minutes. And I said, self, this is it. It's either do or die. Beloved, I tapped into myself. I never came off again. I played the whole season. Starting forward. And I kept on tapping to myself. That's how I got recruited to go to Voraggio, Italy. The law of attraction. Now I'm going to, and the book is called The Secret. You've seen it. You've heard about it. <laughs> Run from that thing. I wish I had time to show it to you, but you go on YouTube and you type in The Secret. It's foolishness. It's name it, claim it, take it home and frame it. If you want to get rich, you just think, no. The way you get rich, you get a J-O-B, sister. You want to pay off your bills? Just imagine your bills being paid off. It don't work with Sally May like that. I imagine that thing every month, the bill comes in the mail. We've got this lunatic, Michael Beckwith. He's a catalyst. For the law of attraction. You watch the clip, watch it on YouTube, it's free now. And Oprah, she is the poster child for the law of attraction. And then even religious teachers use the law of attraction in their sermon. You see this guy here? Joel Austin? And Rick Warren? And let me tell you something, Adventists, we're we're following Rick Warren like he is the disciple. Yes, sir. See, we, 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 we won't use the book Evangelism by Ellen White. That's too antiquated. But we'll get that purpose driven, which is steep in Daoism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Brahmism, Spiritualism, and all the isms schisms you can find. One church had the nerve to use his book for Cyber School Quarterly. And, 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 and you see how bad we get? Oh, yeah. See, we can read Rick Warren's book for Sabbath school. But let me quote Ellen White. Oh, I'm not going back to that church. He quotes too much Ellen White. But if I was quoting Rick Warren, we wouldn't have a problem. Why do you seek for the living? Among the dead. Blind lead the blind. They're going to fall in a ditch. That's what the Bible says, brothers and sisters. This man is on the train. Head into position. And he's on the train too with his million dollar smile. <laughs> and his sermons are just so groovy. <laughs> the law of attraction. He don't call sin, sin. He just dance around it and nice it up and make people feel good in sin. That's where we are. The host of them. And then you got this Tony Robinson fellow. Adventists will pay money. To go here, Tony Robinson, inspire them to great heights. And he doesn't do no love offering either. See, I come to your church, you will pimp me, you give me some love offering. Not Tony Palmer, you got to register before you get there. Then you've got the, the, the flight. There ain't no jet blue. You flying Delta. <laughs> you've got the hotel and food and drink ain't included. To hear this new age mysticize you with, with the Eastern mysticism. Adventist, shame on us. Shame on us. There they are, celebrating this secret. That's why I don't listen to him. Neither watch her. And I hope you're not home watching Oprah. Because she is on the train, brothers and sisters. It's all about the law of attraction with them. What then? I want you to ponder this. You got to get the book. Or the, 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 I say, I'm doing injustice. The book is just so good. 
Note, as I close, we are not to evaluate whether a thing is right or wrong based on the benefits. Amen. Or the results. But does it violate biblical Amen. principle? Amen. Oh, Pastor, now that I went to a reflexologist and the pain went away. Does it make it right? Not based on the results because we are told through these modalities she says many undeniable wonders. Well, I went to an acupuncture and that back pain went away. I feel like a million dollars. Does that make it right? And you know what Mrs. White says? If you are sick and your life, your, your, your liberty rests on going to one of these modalities, she says you better die in Jesus. What then, beloved? There is an oriental stranger at the door. Shall we or shall we not let him in? There is an oriental stranger knocking at our schools. Some of our schools have yoga classes as elective Adventists. There is an eastern man knocking at the door of your house whether you live in Acreage or Jupiter or you're renting an apartment. Shall we or shall we not let him in? But then there is another man that's knocking at the door. And Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And when he comes in, he brings true healing. Yes. He does not just heal the body, but he heals the soul. I like what Mr. Spurgeon says. I close. He says, Bless, blessed be his name. While thus mindful of the body, he had not forgotten the direct sickness of the soul. For he has raised up a plant Raise up for us a plant of renown. A yielding balm far more effectual than of Gilead. This he hath done before the plague of sin had infected us. Christ Jesus is the true medicine man. Of the sons of man was ordained of old to heal the sickness of all his people. He says as for moral diseases. It is all around us and we are thankful to add that the remedy is everywhere within reach. The beloved physician has prepared a healing medicine which can be reached by all classes. For you to take yoga, you've got to buy some yoga pants. <laughs> you can't take yoga in those, no, no, no slacks. But with Christ's healing system, he can heal you just as. Amen. Your all classes is available in every climate, in every hour, under every circumstances, and is effectual in every case. Do you want the healing man this morning? Amen. Don't you want Jesus to come and heal both mind, soul, and body? Well, you stand to your feet and let Jesus know. You want him to come in. Close the door. Don't even open the door to that oriental. That oriental stranger. Bless God. Let us pray. Father in heaven. Oh God, we are so thankful, dear God, for your spirit and for the spirit of prophecy, oh God. We believe and know that where there are no vision, the people perish and the devil cannot bring in his deceptions unless he throw away the spirit of prophecy. Lord, she pinpoints, she puts her fingers on the wounds of Satan and she exposes his Eastern modalities. And you have given this gift to us as a people, O oh God. We are so thankful for that gift that leads upward. 
Father, we are thankful for Jesus, the true healing man. And as we have stood, Father, many of us here are sick morally. We need a change of heart. We need a change of mind. So as you did for that man at the pool, we desire to be made whole, Lord. And as you will heal, Lord, it is not our desire to sin no more. So we ask not just to heal us, but to instruct us in the way of righteousness. Whatever things we are doing, Lord, maybe something physical or spiritual that is bringing about this moral degeneracy in our souls. Give us the strength, O oh God, to stop it. We thank you for stopping by this morning, Lord. And we trust and pray your people were edified this morning. And that your name was glorified. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. Hello. This is Evangelist Carlton Knott with the Final Movements Ministries. I do hope and pray that this ministry has proved to be a tremendous blessing to your soul. And I want to personally thank you for your support, prayers, and otherwise. Beloved, Jesus bids us to work while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. May God help us to take up the task that lies close at hand in giving to the world the message of a dying, risen, and soon coming Savior. Continue to pray for us as we pray for you in the finishing of the work. And remember that great changes are soon to take place in our world and the final movements will be rapid ones. Maranatha.